You want to help, Chug? Hmm? Hello. I am so excited because recently I went to Costco and bought a bunch of bulbs. So I have this pack, which comes with 10 front page oriental lilies, 35 discovery iris, and 30 blushing pink mix gladiolus. I forgot how much this all costs. Honestly, I tried not to even look at the price as I was buying them just because, I don't know, I feel like this is maybe a little bit of a splurge. I do wanna try and grow lilies like successfully for cut flowers. I've just always had an issue with them. I think just with the timing of when I'm putting them out, where I'm putting them out, I think it's rot, like all my bulbs are rotting and I don't exactly know why. So I'm going to start them off indoors and just see how that works and then just put them out when they for sure are going to be warm and happy. I also got some Dahlia tubers. This comes with four Garden Wonder, which is the red one, the deep red one, and four Summer Flame, which is the more orangey one. They look very cute. And then I got um, this packet of Lily of the Valley. So I already have some potted up. I'll probably do this in another video and talk all about that because that's a really great ground cover. It's really great for Alaska. <laughs> Not many things are great for Alaska, but Lily of the Valley do really well. So I'll talk about that later and get the rest of those planted out later. But today I wanted to do the lilies, get these started so that I'll hopefully have some cut flowers early on in the season. Okay, so I just mixed up a bunch of this sunshine mix and uh, cocoa coir. So it's like two thirds of this mix and one third cocoa coir. Just because I wanted to have a really well draining mix because my issue with lily bulbs or any bulbs has been rotting. And I'm pretty sure with these bulbs, you plant them about six inches deep. I'm just gonna fill up like half of this, this, I don't know how big this is, this big pot and I'll plant some in here. It says for on the packaging, these lily bulbs need to be spaced eight inches apart. I don't know if I'm gonna do that. I think this is maybe, gosh, 10 inches wide. And I think I'm gonna put at least three bulbs in here, maybe four. Maybe five. <laughs> I don't know if I should just start them in here and then move them out or like then transplant them outside. They are supposed to be perennial here, but I've never successfully overwintered any lily bulbs in the ground. So I'm just not sure about that. I might not have been putting it in the best spots or and in the best soil. It was pretty compact, the places that I've put it before. Um, I'll do a bit of thinking on that and I think I might ask around to see if people have successfully done it. Daylilies are very common here. I might also just keep them in like pots like this. If I had a bunch of crates, like milk crates, that's what I would be putting them in and then just putting them in the garage to overwinter. That way I can get blooms earlier. You know, I think I'll do that. Maybe keep them in these pots or if I can, if I find something like bigger to store them in so I can move them around like quicker or all at once, then I'll do that so I can overwinter them in the garage. Okay, this is about halfway full. You know, I might plant out the iris bulbs in containers pretty early. Iris do really well. Siberian iris do super well here. I also have some bearded iris outside. Those are so expensive though, but they're gorgeous. And they only like produce flowers once and then that's it. <laughs> so you gotta kind of like the foliage and it is nice. It is a very pretty uh, like shape and color to them. So here is the front page lilies. I'm honestly not sure what a healthy lily bulb is supposed to look like. This looks like all the other bulbs that I've tried to plant, which I haven't ever done well. Maybe not the bulb's fault.
So it's already starting to like sprout a bit at the top. Already starting to get some roots down. Ooh, this one's pretty big. And I'm trying to get like these roots kind of buried deeper in. So this is what my spacing, oops. <laughs> So this is how far apart I think I'm going to space them out. I'm putting four in this container. Um, I might have done it a little bit too low. Um, I might, yeah, take these out, put a little bit more mix in there. And this mix isn't super wet, so it's going to um, pack down a bit. Yeah, and the bulbs that have like healthy looking roots kind of, I am trying to um, like bury those in deeper. Okay, and then cover them up. I, it's probably at least like three inches of potting mix is going on top. And I do have bulb tone, which normally I'd put in like e underneath the bulb so that it has contact with the roots. Um, but it's out in the hoop house right now. I'll go get it like today or tomorrow and then just sprinkle a bunch on top and water that in. Or maybe the next time I water it, I'll sprinkle some on top before I do and water that in. Because maybe the also the reason is that sometimes there's like... Maybe I usually put too much fertilizer in, I'm not sure. Okay, and I'm filling this pot up quite high because I know that once I water it in, it's such a fluffy mix. Great for drainage, but I know it's gonna sink down a bunch. I might even have to add more on top when, this, when I get this watered in in a second. Let me just finish up some other containers that I have with some, with the rest of these lily bulbs. Okay, I got all of the 10 bulbs planted, four in this one, four in this one, and then one each in these two little ones. I'm just gonna water them in now. I wish I had my bigger watering can, but that is out probably underneath feet of snow right now. Okay, hopefully I've watered them in enough. I am just gonna keep them inside until they I start to see growth on top of the soil and then I'll move them probably under lights. I wanna move them under into my hoop house like as soon as they're able to go there, but I want them to do well. So I'm gonna wait until that hoop house really heats up. Honestly, I think next week it's gonna heat up enough to potentially start like hardening off my brassicas and moving my ranunculus and anemones if they sprout. They still haven't really sprouted. I just got more corms in the mail and planted and started pre-sprouting those as well. Um, Hopefully soon. Once those get going, they're really quick to grow. So, yeah, I already, I threw a, like, hygrometer that I use to measure temperature and humidity and things like that. I threw one in the hoop house just so I can start monitoring it. And when it's sunny, it gets up to, like, 40 degrees during the day, which is amazing because it still stays, like, under freezing outside. And, yeah. But it's a bit overcast now. I think next week it's going to start getting over freezing during the days and a little bit, I mean, not warmer because it's still going to be freezing at night, but it's going to be in like the high 20s, which is nice. Um, so that's when I'll consider starting to like harden off and move things off that are very cold tolerant into the hoop house, get a little bit more space indoors. Yeah, these lilies, I'll... I'll just wait. I'll just be safe with these because I do have other lily bulbs outside that I planted in last year. 
um, and I'm hoping they're gonna overwinter. Some of them are in containers that I tried to um, just push up against raised beds or really try and protect against the cold. And I hope those do okay. I think some of them were in the ground, but I'm not sure. I know I tried that the year before last and yeah, they're just not like growing. So I don't know. Um, I have high hopes for these and I will try and pamper them a bit more than usual this year. So crossing my fingers that they'll grow well this year. Um, I have, I don't know if I'm gonna do this today, but these are my, I don't know if I showed. These are the iris discovery bulbs, which are, I think, Siberian iris. These I'm gonna plant out soon. I'm kind of hoping that I can sell these at the farmer's market. Siberian iris do really well. The thing also is that a lot of people have them in their garden, and a good way to get them is just to, like, ask somebody you know who might have them to propagate them because they, like, um, spread pretty well here in Alaska. They like grow and multiply and you can just divide them every now and again and like give some away because you get a lot of them if you have them for years. And then I have these gladiolus bulbs that came in the container. These I'm going to keep um, in the office where it's either in the office or in the garage. I just wanna just keep those until I can plant them outside in the ground and they'll be kind of like a late summer bloom for me. I don't I don't know if they'll overwinter. I might try and, here are the gladiolus. They're very pretty. They get very tall. They're like big stalks of flowers and I've never grown them before, but I had a friend who did grow them um, here. I'm pretty sure successfully. And maybe, and if I have time, I'll try and like dig them up and bring them in. But really I bought this pack, not for the gladiolus, although like that would be fun to try, but for the lily and the iris. And then, I don't know, I think I wanna go back to Costco sometime soon and see if they have other, other things at the garden center that I might like. I know that they carry a lot of fruit trees sometimes and they have a lot of peonies, so I think that's what I'm going to try and invest in this year is more peonies because those also do super well in Alaska. They take a few years to actually even produce a bloom. So the ones at Costco that I saw like last year, they're already potted up. They already have like a lot of foliage. Hopefully maybe that's a little bit quicker. I wouldn't expect any blooms this year, but yeah, it'll be more of a long-term investment. They're, they are kind of expensive, so um, I do want to start filling up the front landscape, like the garden beds in the front yard. That will be nice. The peonies, I think, will be good there. And some of these iris, too, probably, I'll keep for myself. Hey, Brendan. Yeah? You got an extension cord for me? Yeah. <laughs> this one? Sure. Yeah, pull it. Can you help me? Can you help me set it up? Oh, here we go. Where's that flashlight? What a tear. Have you seen my bigger flashlight? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I see. Where is this going? Um, plug it into the outlet. And then I have already my light timer on the ground there. Get the trip over this every time I need something. We can try and push it up against the walls. Go around the ceiling. It's hard to organize this space. Uh, right. One day, maybe this will all be my grow room. Nope. <laughs> we'll see. Nope. Okay, but we'll see. <laughs> We'll see about seeing. <laughs>
Yeah, we'll see about C U L T. Thank you for the Okay, now that I got some of the lights going in the garage, I'm gonna try and wake up these perennials. If they're still alive, I see a bunch of like mold kind of growing on the top, but I also see new growth because it's starting to get warmer. Like even in the garage, it's starting to get warmer. There's hasn't been any light. So what growth I do see is very like white and leggy. I'll give you a close up look at it. I'm just gonna go ahead and trim some of this old dead growth off. I think the, this one I'm pretty sure is a delphinium. I have these in pots because I was selling them at the farmer's market last year or at least I intended to. I don't know if I brought all of these to the farmer's market just because I didn't have a lot of space. This one might be dead. <laughs> I don't know really I'm just gonna like cross my fingers and hope for the best for these. There's some echinacea in here as well. They've been in the garage, just in this closet in the dark for like the whole winter. Um, and they were very moist the last I checked on them. So maybe that was a good thing, maybe not, because maybe it just rotted out some of the roots. Here, I'll show you what it looks like. Like there, that fuzzy white stuff makes me think. Maybe it's dead, but then there you see a bunch of growth on that. I'd be happy if these two delphinium maybe were the only ones left alive. Delphinium are so hard to germinate, at least in my experience. Well, not hard, but they're so slow to germinate. Echinacea, was it this one that I was seeing? Yeah, some growth off of. That would be great, that would be wonderful. Oh yeah, that one too. Okay, so crossing my fingers. I do have echinacea in the ground outside that I put in last year. I put in kind of at the end of last year and it's in a space where my perennials typically don't come back. So I'm not sure if that's a good spot. It's, I tried to make a little flower bed there um, where previously there wasn't. So I just don't know about that spot. Um, hopefully they did well, but at least, at the very least, I have a couple, and I know that I can hopefully overwinter any potted plants that I don't sell at the farmer's market in the pots in the garage this way. I tried some, like I have some of these same pots filled with some of the same perennials. Um, I have like a flat of them, I think, outside in the hoop house, and I also have one just outside, but pressed up against like between the hoop house and a big raised bed, a strawberry raised bed that I built. And hopefully, I don't know, I was thinking, you know, the snow would pack in around it. It would be <laughs> like it's against these two structures. Hopefully maybe it's a little bit more protected from like the cold chill. So maybe those will survive too. I don't know. I wanted to try a few different places to overwinter these and see what works best. I'm quite pleased with this and it's very easy just to have them in the shelves here. We have some other stuff like junk that, um, you know, inevitably gets put on these shelves when I'm not using them to grow, but I don't know, I could make space and dedicate this shelf particularly to overwintering any potted up perennials. That would be a good idea. And the rest of this rack and the light systems, I have to replace the lights on top. Those don't look like they're working, but for the rest of this, it's nice to have um, my seedlings that need to be in a little bit of a colder environment here. Things like larkspur, lupin. Yeah, not necessarily things that need to be cold stratified, but things that will get so leggy and want a cold season anyway, so they don't do well in the office that stays at like 60, like above 70 degrees. So now that I have those lights going in the garage, that's a good place for me to get some other seeds started. I'm thinking Larkspur now. Um, maybe I'll do my poppies down there. I already have, I'm already like ready to go to plant up my poppies. I was going to do them in 
these little containers and put them in the hoop house but now I'm thinking I can just do them in these containers they have to be surface sewn and they like a bit of cold so maybe I'll start them in the garage and then move them out into the hoop house they're pretty cold tolerant as well um, I might get started on those later tonight or I might just give myself the night off <laughs> get started on those tomorrow have a lazy evening with Brendan and the dog and if that's the case I will just sign off now <laughs> thanks so much for watching I'll see you in the next video bye